www.japansupermart.com Asia-Pacific REITs perform in 2014 and why? The REITs did well in 2014. I think with the dividends, the return was close to 16%. Why? Uh, there are certain growth areas, basically Japan, uh, one of the main things, and some of the areas in selective niches, they're still giving a very good rental yield. Uh, and the rental yields are growing faster than any interest rate hikes, if any. Moreover, rates were pretty flat or slightly negative in terms of trend for 2014. Going forward, what are the key drivers and key risks of Asia-Pacific REITs? I think whenever you manage any funds, you need to have a balance of both because REITs are supposed to give you a dividend yield. So we need to have a portfolio where the earnings are quite stable, dividends are growing like 2 to 3% beating inflation, and they give you a pretty decent yield. So if you look at our portfolio as a whole, our running yield is quite close to about 5% uh, at present weightage. But as an investor, you also want growth in terms of NAV. And we have to find those areas where there's growth potential. Just to name a few, number one, in Japan, uh, if you look at whether it's office or whether you look at logistics or whether you look at hospitality or accommodation, the demand far exceeds supply. Occupancy rates are 94, 95, 96%. Even if you want to get something, you're, you'll be on a waiting list. So the growth area is pretty strong as far as Japan is concerned. But in Japan, the REITs yield only 3%. So you cannot have all of Japan. You can have a, uh, a portion of Japan uh, to give you the NAV growth, but you need to compensate it with areas where the yields are higher. Where the areas there where the yields are higher, for example, in Singapore, most of the REITs are about 6%. So that satisfy our, our running yield. We just want to be on the average about 5%. Likewise for Australia as well. In Australia, we still have the core areas like uh, retail will have the non-discretionary spending uh, like Charter Hall REIT. We will also have selective office uh, exposure and also on US dollar exposure because Australian dollar will be weaker vis-a-vis -vis USD. Uh, for example, Westfield, which has overseas development, or Goodman, which has uh, overseas logistics play. But there are certain domestic niche area where your demand exceeds supply again. The two key areas are childcare center and healthcare. So if you put it together as a whole, you would be able to get a blend where there's a decent running yield, and also a certain blend where you have growth sectors, like I mentioned Japan, like I mentioned Australia, healthcare, and uh, child care and so you have a blend of growth and you have a blend of uh, sustainable yield. Now risk will always be higher than interest rate. I don't think that will happen for Australia and even if it happens for Australia and Singapore, there's a gap between the running yield and the risk free rate. Uh, on the last time we checked it's something like about 30 basis points. Uh. So rates can go up 30 basis points and I don't think so it will affect valuation. Uh, but having said that, there are seasons in 2000 where in Singapore where interest rate went up, but the REITs also performed. The key difference is that growth must normalize and the dividend payment every year must exceed the rate of inflation. And if that happens, then even with a gradual normalization and rise in interest rate, the NAV can go up because you're giving more and more dividends, you see. So it's not an end all be all. There are risks involved, but I, I think we have enough uh, controls to make sure that we are well balanced everywhere. And in Japan, I don't think rates will go up anyway. So uh, there are risks, but uh, at this point, uh, we are not uh, that overly worried. Considering all of the above, what is your outlook for Asia Pacific rates? For one thing, I think the um, running yield can give you, like I say, high fours or five. Uh, if I don't do anything, okay. So uh, you you will probably get a running yield on that. In terms of growth, I still think you can have a decent single digit NAV growth. So because you must realize REITs, it's supposed to outpace inflation. It's not supposed to be like. Uh, 
a high alpha equity market. It's supposed to outpace inflation and gradually goes up and it also must give you returns in terms of cash, dividends. So I think you will get close to your 5% yield, uh, all things being equal, and I think you will have a gradual appreciation. And if the fund managers can do that, which we have been doing that, uh, then I think you're home free. We were very blessed. For the last three years, it's up 50%, so it's more than inflation. Uh, but as you've interviewed me before, every year I keep saying that let's do a single digit growth and if we get anything higher than that, then it's a bonus. Huh? You mentioned about interest rates earlier on. How do you plan to mitigate the risk? There's no way you can mitigate interest rate. Okay? If it happens, you must prepare for it. Whether you're in fixed income or whether you're in other equity classes, if rates goes up, you've got to mitigate uh, your, your risk exposure by trying to find areas where the growth will be higher than interest rate or where demand exceeds supply like how I explained or where regions where rates will not go up and, and you position yourself in those uh, and in that way you can mitigate the, the interest rate uh, risk in some sense uh, but you know interest rate has, risk has been there for all our lives so we just have to manage the risk exposure it, can, it won't go away you know you, you just got to manage it uh, uh, by selecting the sectors where it's least affected uh, and position yourself uh, on a combination of growth and, and sustainable yield are property prices a big factor in risk valuation how would property prices move in 2015 and what will be the impact on the sector okay i want to answer it in a, in a different manner uh, if property prices are too high, then of course REIT managers cannot buy, right? Because REIT managers must buy a property where they give you sustainable yield. So if property prices runs too far ahead, the REIT managers won't be able to find anything that they can buy. And they need to do organic development. They need to develop their own thing and the parents must inject into the, the sponsor must inject into the REITs. But having said that, if you look at what happened for 2014, REITs went up along with property prices anyway. So it was uh, a, a win-win situation for both. It's come to a point where you cannot just simply buy properties. You need to find the sectors uh, where uh, uh, there's uh, lower supply and high demand. Office space in Singapore, like I said, lo uh, logistics, uh, like I said, uh, healthcare and childcare and practically quite a lot of the sectors in Japan because that's where they have a lack of supply. The moment you have a lack of supply, your rental goes up. And when your rental goes up, you can afford to pay higher prices for property prices. Having said that, I don't think physical property prices will do as well as 2014. I think it would be a slow appreciation, but I think your downside is very limited for one main reason. Costs have all gone up everywhere in Asia or in the world. So, Developers need to, need to make money, you know. They, they just can't sell you at the price that you want. They need to make money and building materials and everything has gone up. So prices won't come off. I think your downside is limited. It's your upside that you need to be selective and, and there will be certain pockets of appreciation. But it won't be as 2014. 